that you have all had a really, really good week this week. We have got another Zoom catch-up call for you guys at 10.30 again today after this video. It would be lovely um, to see you there if you're able to join us. We'll play some more games. We've had some good games of Pictionary the last few weeks, so um, I think we'll be carrying that on as it seems to be so popular at the moment. Um, now, though, it is time to find out who is the winner of our February prize because we have got a lot of names. Can you hear this? We have got a lot of names in our prize bag this month, especially after so many of you sent in your amazing pancake flipping videos. We've got a lot of extra names in the bag uh, this month. So shall we have a look inside and see who is our February winner? Let's have a look whose name have I got here. Oh, it's Jemima. Congratulations, Jemima. Well done to you. The Rainbow Science Lab Kit will be on its way to you very soon. Um, if you didn't win this month, don't worry because next week I will be revealing a brand new prize and lots more challenges um, and competitions that you can enter to see if you can get your name into our next month prize bag and have another go. And a big well done to everybody who entered. There have been some fantastic entries to some of our challenges this month. So well done um, if you gave them a go. Now though, uh, let's take a look at this week's video. What's up people? I am Haley. And I hope you came to cheer today because I am and always have been a super fan! <laughs> I'm telling you, the town I grew up in, we all rooted for the home team. We ate, drank, and slept. Orange. And whether we were there in the stands or watching from home, we cheered our hearts and our lungs out for our team. That's what's called kindness. Kindness is showing others they are valuable by how you treat them. And if you're wearing orange like me, you can expect some first class treatment. But if you're wearing blue, then that means you're a fan of that other team, our rivals. I can tell you what they're like. They're mean. They're cheaters. They eat broccoli. They're pretty scary. I've actually never met one in person, but that's what I've heard. I am not a fan. Not a fan. You know, if I saw someone on that blue team lying on the side of the road, you know what I'd do? I, I, I'm actually not sure what I would do. I'm not, I'm not sure. But today's Bible story will help us know what we should do. <sighs> Broccoli! <gasps> The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, Chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. Everywhere Jesus went, crowds of people followed. His popularity made the religious leaders kind of nervous, how he turned their expectations upside down. What is he up to anyway? So they began to look for ways to trip him up. One day, a law expert saw his chance to test Jesus. Teacher, <clears throat> What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus turned the question right back on the law expert. What is written in the law? How do you read it? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But the law expert wanted to discover the very least he could do to obey the law. So. He got tricky. Ah, uh, yes, but really, who is my neighbor? 
Jesus looked directly at the law expert and he saw what was in his heart. So Jesus began a story. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now, if Jesus were to tell this story today, it might go something like this. There's a man that we'll call uh, Ben who needed to travel from Jerusalem to Jericho. It was a lonely, rugged road, but he was well prepared. Got my water skin, got my quail jerky. Ah, uh, got my snake repellent. Uh, got my large number of clinking gold coins. <laughs> Stick them up. Uh-oh, forgot my mace. A band of robbers attacked Ben. They took everything, leaving him half dead by the side of the road. Help, please help me. <sighs> there was no one to hear. The sun beat down. Shadows shifted as the day wore on. At last, he heard footsteps. Through shimmering heat, he could barely see a man in khakis and a blue button-down shirt. In the beginning. Uh, um, you know, let me Google the Greek word for beginning. That'll make me sound more intelligent. The man was a preacher working on his Sunday sermon. Help me. The preacher spotted Ben lying there in the dust, but he immediately looked down at his phone, pretending not to see. Instead, he crossed to the other side of the street, putting as much space between him and Ben as possible. Please. But the preacher was gone. Ben's throat was dry now. He could barely swallow. Finally, he saw someone else. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. A worship leader was now trekking down the road. He wore skinny jeans, uh, an unnecessary scarf, and uh, AirPods. Help, help me. Well, the worship leader definitely saw Ben, but he cranked up the volume on his AirPods and shimmied to the other side of the road as he passed. Uh, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I, uh, river, I'm gonna run away. As the man's voice faded away, Ben was left in despair. Shadows lengthened as evening approached. Once again, Ben heard someone coming. Turning his head, he could just barely make out a donkey. Perhaps he could tell from the way the person was dressed that this person wasn't a Jew. He was a Samaritan. Oh no. Jews and Samaritans were enemies. Even though the two groups were related, there was a history of bitter conflict between them. And the Samaritans worshiped God in a different way than the Jews did. Long story short, a Samaritan would have been the last person Ben would have wished to find him. What's that by the road? Instead of ignoring Ben though, the Samaritan man slowed down and got off his donkey. Oh no, who did this? The Samaritan quickly rummaged for supplies in his bag. Here, ha have some water. Those are nasty gashes. I I've got oil and wine to clean them out. The Samaritan bandaged Ben's wounds and hefted him onto his own donkey. Steady, steady. Hey, wrap your arms around his neck like this. By the time darkness fell, the Samaritan brought Ben to an inn where the injured man could recover. Thank you, thank you. In the morning, the Samaritan gave the innkeeper some money. Please take care of this man. I'll return and pay you back for any extra expenses. Goodbye. Thank you. When Jesus finished the story, no one said a word. He looked directly at the law expert. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? <sighs> the law expert fidgeted. To admit that the Samaritan had acted as a true neighbor was to say that everyone is a neighbor, no matter how different they may be. Well, I suppose in this case, one would have to say the man who had mercy on him. Go and do likewise. Jesus' story was clear. Love your neighbor as yourself isn't limited to just the people in your neighborhood. Your neighbor means anyone who needs you to show them God's love. So Jesus said to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And who is your neighbor? 
Well, it's the person who lives next door to you. Or in your apartment building. Or in your neighborhood. Or the town you grew up in. Or your country. Or your planet. In short, your neighbor is everyone. That includes people who look different from you, people who believe different from you, people who have more money than you or less money than you, everyone. Jesus said we should go and be kind to all of those people. It kind of makes me think of the fans of that blue team. If I'm supposed to be kind to everyone, that includes them. <laughs> but how? How can I be kind to someone who's so, so different? Maybe I could try putting myself in their shoes. Hmm. Whoa. Well, that's a start. Hmm. What else can I do? Maybe I can find out more about the blue fans so I can see what we have in common. Like, I'll bet they grew up rooting for their team just like I did. I'll bet they cheered their hearts and their lungs out. And I bet they ate, drank, and slept blue too. Maybe we're more alike than we think. Or maybe we're just different. And that's okay. In fact, it's incredible to know that there are billions of people with all kinds of differences all over the world! So here's the one thing for us to remember today. Be kind to people who are different from you. Don't just think about what you'd want or need. Put yourself in their jerseys and think about what they'd want or need. It really is possible to be kind to everyone. You know, I hate to admit it, but I look good in this color. <laughs> And another thing, broccoli? <laughs> it's really not that bad. Bye, super friend! Mmm! Why not take a moment just now to think about some of the people who are different from you? Maybe it's people you know who go to a different school or perhaps people who have a different religion or a different set of beliefs to you. You might be thinking of someone who's different to you because they support a different football team or because they like playing different computer games to the games that you like. Or perhaps there's someone who's a little bit different to you that you have a bit of a history of not getting along with very well Maybe they tend to be a little bit unkind or tend to say things that, that wind you up a little bit. In the story that Jesus told, Jews and Samaritans had a history of not getting along with each other very well. But the Samaritan in the story didn't let that stop him from showing kindness to the Jewish man lying in the road. Showing kindness even to people who are different from us or we don't always get along with very well can be an amazing way of building bridges in our relationships. It can lead to new friendships and it's an amazing way that we can worship God. So for your challenge this week, I would love for you to have a go at building a bridge. Um, and think of this as a bit of like a kindness bridge that can you can use as a reminder to reach out to people who are different from you. To make your bridge, what you're going to need to do is first create two little islands that raise up off the ground. You could use some ice cream tubs or Tupperware, you could use a pile of books for each island, it doesn't really matter. Try and make sure they're the same height because um, that will make your, your bridge building a little bit easier. Then what you want to do is imagine that one island is you and the people you like and get along with who are similar to you and the other island is anybody who is a bit different and maybe you struggle to get along with. You might want to try to create a bit of a river or pool of water between the two islands. You could use some blue paper or a towel or a t-shirt that's blue, something to represent 
Um, you could even, instead of water, you could have it as lava. If you want to go orange, like whatever, you can do it as creatively as you like. And on your river or pool of lava, you want to write down some of the things that are the differences between you and the other island. Maybe some of the things that stop you from getting along or maybe get in the way of you having a really good relationship. And then you want to try to build a bridge to connect the two islands. And you want to try and build a really strong bridge. So you could use any materials around your home for this. If you want to make it a bit more challenging, you could limit yourself to certain types of material. So I'm going to try and do my bridge just using paper. Um, and you could also add to the challenge by seeing how strong your bridge is, by testing it with different weight objects. So you could try different number of um, pennies or different vegetables in your kitchen and see how strong your bridge is. While you're building your bridge, you could either write these on your bridge or if your bridge is made out of a material that's hard to write on, you might just want to talk about it with, with your family. Think about some of the acts of kindness that you could do, that you could show to the people who are different to you. Um, and you might want to write those on your bridge. Like I say, if you've not got a paper bridge, if your bridge is made out of something that's hard to write on, then maybe just talk about it. Have a competition with other people in your family, see who can build the strongest bridge, the tallest bridge, the longest bridge, um, however you want to do it. Be as creative as you like, but don't forget to take a photo of it when you're finished and send in your pictures to me. My email address, as always, is in the description box underneath the video. Um, if you send in your picture, then I will put your name into next month's prize bag. So, like I say, next week we'll be revealing what that prize is going to be. So, um, have loads of fun building your bridges. If you're joining us on Zoom then at 10.30, then I'll look forward to seeing you shortly. If not, then I hope you have a really good week and I'll see you in our next video. Bye!